Sometimes, some days, I'm feeling down and in the dumps, and other times, I'm just jamming to every single remix of the East City theme in every every version of Gran Turismo. It's just oh, mwah, delish, mwah. so good, so good. Anyways, three, two, one. Hello everybody, welcome to the stream, it is the BNS stream today on this fine 29th of July 2024. I hope you're having a wonderful week and we'll have a wonderful week ahead of you. My week has been pretty good, pretty good, yeah, it's good, I don't know where I'm going with that, why I'm speaking in falsetto. Um, but yeah, no, I, I've been having a good, a pretty good time. Um, sort of chill, sort of, I've had a bunch of things uh, to do, but... Uh, you know, we get it done. And you know what else we get done? Uh, jumping into today's game of the day. Or actually, it's not going to be of the day, it's going to be of quite a few streams. We'll see how long it all takes, how well I, I go about it. Uh, but let's jump right into it, shall we? Wah! Look at this! 3D Realms. Reality is our game. It's, it is our game. <laughs> Uh, this is Duke Nukem 3D, a, uh, you know, it's, it's, oh my gosh, it is, it is a, a loudish game, but no, Duke Nukem 3D is, um, what I can only describe as one of the, uh, kind of granddaddy FPS titles, uh, and very iconic for what it was when it came out. Um, what made Duke Nukem 3D great is not necessarily having the best gunplay, but for being a very, very wacky game on a rather well-intentioned game engine. And I say that knowing full well that in the same year that this came out, in 1996, Quake came out in 1996. And Quake is very technically impressive in a lot of ways. Duke Nukem 3D feels a little straightforward. It's like, oh, you know, Rooms Over Rooms is uh, like a technical workaround as opposed to Quake where it's literally, that's it. Uh, enemies are still sprites. But, how do you make it work? Can you make the game fun? And that's what Duke Nukem does well. That's what Duke... Bet on Duke, you know? So, we're gonna have a run through this game on Come Get Some. I... Uh, I haven't played this game enough to know if Damn I'm Good is, a uh, Like, Nightmare Difficulty, where it's the same enemies, but they're super fast. I think it is... These are four different sets of enemy spawns. Um, but we'll dive into it. So, into the first level, the Hollywood Holocaust. I'm gonna have the kills and secrets counter on screen as well, just so people can go, Ah, yes, you've been in this level for that long. Because if I'm wandering around and you... <laughs> you know, whatever. Um, I'm also playing, uh, this through eduke32, a source port. Uh, but in particular, I am playing the, uh, the 3D Realms Anthology release of the game. Um, so for reference, if you're playing the game with an older UI, it's probably gonna look like that. Well, not older, but like, you know, the normal UI. Um, but you know, hey, we can get the whole screen available, can't we? That's all good. I'm also gonna hit the, the quick save, so I'm gonna call this, uh, BlendDB actually stream, stream, there you go. And there we go, we saved the game. So then I can hit F6 and we're just constantly quick saving the game. Um, but yeah, ju just want to dive in. The first thing that makes the game real cool is just how wonderfully destructible the environment is. And on top of that, you get a lot of fun verticality in the level design. We've got this like nice little, you know, like whatever going on there. Uh, and immediately you're presented with a bunch of enemies and a bunch of things just happening. You're like, oh my gosh, what's going on here? Um, there's tons of secrets to be witnessed immediately as the game starts. You're up, you've got this wide open street with flashing signs saying cinema. Very wonderful. This game's decals are an absolute treat as well. Um, as well as every single flying enemy. Uh, but if you jump onto this box, and yes, you do indeed have a jump button. And you, oh, oh my gosh and then jump up onto this ledge, you'll see that this is a secret. We can use that to shoot the one guy who's chilling in this window, giving you a hint that, yes, there is indeed a little hidden room over here, along with uh, some ammo for your RPG, another guy who deserves it. Uh, these security terminals all over the place actually give you, uh, well, some camera angles, whether that's useful or not. But it's kind of cool. There's also a little secret here, past the uh, Attack of the Bleach Blonde Biker Bimbos uh, sign. Five minutes, we're trying to see how many words I can apparently scare the YouTube sponsors with. I'm not even sponsored, it's just the advertisers. Uh, and this is one thing I love as well. 
is that you can see this wall on there is cracked. If you shoot it, or the guy next to it, it breaks open. There's so many of these destructible walls throughout the game as well. All part of the level design of the game is truly destructible, but certainly there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of fun scenery to toy around with. Uh, so I'm going to try my best to show off as much of the levels as I know of, but there's obviously going to be secrets and things like that where it's like, oh, you know, like some guy's already figured this out. Um, you know, so, some guy knows more about the game than I do. Uh, but I will do the general rule of I am going to try and find the, um, uh, you know, the secret levels. Uh, every episode has uh, one or two. There's, uh, there exists three episodes of this game uh, with the uh, later released Atomic Edition uh, including a fourth episode and an even later uh, edition of the game, the 20th and oh my gosh, I'm already dead. I'm already dead. <laughs> How about let's go on the main entrance because I apparently suck going through that entrance. That's a little bit of a secret kind of, you know, entrance way into the level. Um, but the, the less explosive way is around this little side alley here. We got a shotgun, so and I get to start peeking out. Um, but, uh, but yeah, there, there, there exists a, uh, a, um, a fifth episode released in 2016, uh, for the Duke Nukem 3D 20th Anniversary World Tour Edition, um, created by Gearbox, but it still has a lot of the, uh, the people who, uh, worked on the, um, original versions of the game. Man, I'm running out of ammo a ton on this level, I swear. Um, on top of that, we also have, uh, not one, not two, but three official expansions uh, of the game release over, um, the short years after its release. Um, this is, uh, where, <laughs> where we were before. We've done the lap around this building, as you can see on the little auto map we've got, um, which I might bring up from time to time. Lots of these light switches are also... Uh, accessible, including this uh, little one, which opens up this little cor corner there. You can also open this room, find a shotgun. The guy's sort of accepting it, and also this door, this room on the far side has opened up. Lots of little hideaways. There's so much interactivity in this first level already. Like, I mean, some of it is uh, visible, but some of it is just like, hey, it's a cash register. We gotta add, like, you know, a bit of functionality there. I believe if you- yeah, you can use like this wall and that's actually a secret. It's just- usually there's just little hidey holes to hide yourself in. Um, there's also a very cool thing around this corner is the bathroom. You can actually turn on the light and have a better sight in, but all these people waiting there because they're blind, they don't see mirrors. Let's pop them off. Very nice. You have a mirror, you can interact with it. Damn, I'm looking good. Very nice, you can use the- can't use the hand dryer though, but you can use the uh, the ammo for the shotgun. Uh, but uh, check out, there's a guy on the toilet here as well. Very, very nice. And you can indeed piss. Uh, much better. It's very nice. So uh, grab this portable med kit. Uh, sort of like uh, Quake Two. There's a uh, you know there's an inventory system. Um, although I guess Quake Two came out after this. Uh, you've got different items here. The steroids make you run faster. The health pack does what it does, says on the tip. It's a health pack. 100% means I can heal 100% left. Um, up to 100 health, so I'm overhealed right now. Uh, you want to avoid the, uh... I think the trapped babes, is that the term they use in the game? Uh, destroying them, uh, one, takes a few hits, and two, will punish you. Because you're not meant to destroy the babes, you're meant to rescue them. So, usually it punishes you by, yeah, spawning another enemy in the level. That's on you for that. Oh my gosh. The shotgun is such a good shotgun as well. It's, it's a great feeling. Um, this is uh, how I scare... Uh, hold on, we're going to wait until we're 10 minutes into the video, because otherwise then... <laughs> Twitch and YouTube will get slightly angry at this. I will, will wander down the stairs. I love these, like, swirly spiral staircase as well. You will hear enemies all over the place, but this game does have, you know, it's got room over rooms, which for the most part work, but they are non-Euclidean. Just just watch out. It's technically, it doesn't have to be Euclidean level designed. Um, 
we'll get into that more later. But... And we're back into this room. But yeah, entering and exiting rooms via different routes will, uh, you know, spawn different enemies. And there's lots and lots of different pathways through some levels. So, okay, I think we're good. Uh, I now get to flick this on and then be like, oh my gosh. Shield your eyes, children. This is, uh, this is, uh, how, um, well, I, you know, this game was sort of, uh, do I describe it as edgy? I'd put it as risque, I wouldn't exactly say edgy, but it's like, Duke is a very, very kind of sleazy, macho kind of guy, and so this idea of, you know, him basically living in Hollywood, and like going to Vegas and stuff, is, uh, you know, it's a fun kind of gimmick presence. Uh, but Duke Nukem 3D is not the first Duke Nukem game. But it is kind of the only one that I've played. I know. Oh, sorry, no, I've played Duke Nukem Forever. I haven't even played the... There's, there's just, like, other platformer ones. The first two were 2D platformers, and, uh... Duke Nukem The Manhattan Project in 2002 is a 2D platformer. Also, uh, just a note, uh, lifts always go up and down when you press the interact key and they never automatically go up and down, which is uh, something I feel like they played Doom and they went, you know what? Yeah, that makes sense. This is a little side cut as well, it just leads back into the, the movie theater. Which is weird, because like, hold on. Like, this is about one Duke's height worth of map, okay? We're slightly downhill. But we haven't gone down that far. I think they actually did get the heights right. Because, again, technically, nothing stops you from making it non-Euclidean. Mm, don't have time to play with myself. There also exists, uh... Mm, don't have time to the, uh, play the pinball myself. game, Balls of Steel. It already exists. So, Duke Nukem's already had plenty of, uh, escapades before. Um, but this is just such a... On its own, iconic game. You don't need to know Duke Nukem or really anything. He's just a dude who shoots, shoots pig cop aliens, and you gotta take the hit sometimes. That's that's the only other bummer about some of the level design here and there. Uh, just that the in the little hallway, around the bridge at the end of the level. Um, but in that little kind of side cut, I actually picked up uh, a jetpack, and the jetpack is the best item in the game, because it basically allows you to fly. And in levels like this, where it's like, if you can fly, you can immediately jump to the end of the level. You know? It all makes sense. There is a health power up there as well, but I don't think I need it. I'm good. Famous last words. Let's just, uh, jump to the end. I'm gonna kick that. And, uh, let's end the level. I got 7 out of 8 secrets, I'm happy. Uh, 3D Realms then. Uh, by the way? Oh, we got a by the way. Yes, by the way. Okay. You can in fact jump- Oh, you can- you can jump it? Oh, you can do it off the door, can't you? Does the door open out? Hold on, can I actually load... My, uh, my quick save? Can we just- How- how close to the end of the level? Oh my gosh, I didn't save for ages. Mmm. Okay, pro tip. Don't be like me and hit quick load and you don't know where your save was. Speedrun this. Speedrun it. Ah. Rookie error. You jump in the first secret room with those steroids. Uh, I'll mentally try and remember that. Those who have enough speed to jump over the holes. Oh! You jump. Oh! That's cool. Because, yeah, there's the, there's the jetpack for reference, and there's the, the door. So, in theory, I guess. I didn't hit that guy. So, if it's like you've got the steroids, for example, and you're like over there. And you just use the steroids, and then you just... <laughs> there you go. There you go. <laughs> very nice. Very, very nice. Well, we'll just jump from there. I was, I was gonna say, I, I'm gonna blame the EGUK engine and me just strafe running. <laughs> I think strafe running's a thing in this game, right? Yeah. Rockin'. 
Anyway, on to the next level, the Red Light District. I'm gonna do a beginning of the level save every time, just in case. Uh, each of these levels, uh, there's just, uh, five? Four, five levels in the first episode? Um, which is a bit shorter than the rest, but again, it's designed as a shareware kind of idea. Where, uh, you know, everyone can download this, like, version of the game that has the first few levels. Um, and I think that works for this kind of game as well. These pick cops and the flying cars definitely, it's like, oh, they take their hits. That's all good. I love these, like, little slopes. You can just find, like, little places to walk up to, find some armor here or there. Uh, no, I, I, I don't speedrun this game. I've played it before. This isn't a blind playthrough. Um, I've done a good number of runs, but not like, yeah, I wouldn't say I've, I've speedrun. Uh, just, I've played enough games like this. Uh, I did recently do a, um, a speed, not a speed run, but, uh, I did a recent playthrough of, uh, Metroid Prime, uh, just casually, locally. Um, and uh, I was going for the Retro Achievements uh, set, and one of them is beat the whole game in three and a half hours. Oh, thanks for the follow as well. Um, it was like, beat the game in three and a half hours, and I've, I'm putting on my speed running cap in that game, and I'm just like, I'm just gonna like, fully like, strap myself in. Uh, every time. A unisex bathroom. Oh my gosh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Um, but yeah, when did I first play this game? It probably was around like 2012, really. Um, so there exists multiple versions of this game, may I, may I add as well? You should stream through Redneck Rampage. You know what? Out of all the build engine games, that's the only one I haven't played. Um, which is a shame because uh, I played uh, Quake 2 in its entirety uh, at the beginning of the year. And one of the expansions is by uh, Yatrix. So it's probably got a lot of the same level designers on that as well. Oh my gosh, I don't, oh, it's the mouth, it's okay. It's okay. Oh, hi there. Um, as nice graphical patch making it look like this. Um, yeah, oh yeah, because every Duke Nukem, sorry, every build engine game doesn't necessarily work on, um, E-Duke does it, where it's like, Who wants some? uh, Doom is pretty ubiquitous, or at least. Damn, you know, they, they've ridden, they've ridden the engine for all of them. I don't know why there's a shortcut there, because it's like, what am I shortcutting here? But okay. Um, the way to continue this level is that you have to know this code. Uh, you can easily trial and error all of them. Uh, I believe isn't it? Yeah, I was like, I'm very certain there's a secret in one of these walls as well. Look at that pipe bombs. Very nice. Ooh, hi there. Pipe bombs are such a fun weapon to use in this game as well. Who can see anything? I can't. I can barely see anything in here, man. Use the auto map, it's your friend. There's a little secret, either. God in the health. Oh. I just made it dark everywhere. <laughs> All right, up we go, up we go. Um, but yeah, so there exists multiple releases of this game depending on when you exist. Um, the original uh, release of the game came out in 1996. I forgot when the Atomic Edition came out, but I believe all the expansions were either 97 or 98. It was around that time period. It took a, took a bit. Also, none of the expansions are by the original devs, and uh, when you play them, you can tell. But, uh, we'll get there. I love this weapon as well, because, uh, it doesn't use the same ammo as the pistol. So the pistol still has use. Unlike Doom, where it's like, I'm never using, I'm never using this again. 3D Realms Demolition Company. Hold on. Rebound shot. Love it. Um, uh... At some point, yeah, they released the Duke Nukem 3D Atomic Edition. The Atomic Edition contains uh, the fourth episode as sort of like a freebie for all, you know, hey, you know, you can download the Atomic Edition, just like the Ultimate Doom. I love the destroying, the destruction of that building, it's great fun. And in here we have the yellow key card. I love as well, you've got to be explicit with using all the key cards. I didn't even use the health at all, so... Maybe I'll return back to it. Uh, this is a fun little secret as well. 
you can blow this up and uh, head down into the sewers, which does drop your health. But we do have an atomic health down here and lots of rats. Also, uh, a whole um, Octo Brain is they're referred to. Think of them like the Caco Demons. They're sort of not that threatening, but they are kind of big. They take a few hits. Uh, you've also got basically your range of items right here. The jetpack, the steroids, the, um, the hologram. And uh, what else would we pick up? The night vision goggles, which would have been useful like a moment ago. As well as more pipe bombs and... Uh, where is it? Where Hi, where do you come out of? I don't think... Oh, yeah, you can't activate... You can't activate the door to leave from there. I don't know why. I, I struggle with that. So I'm just like, well, they give you a jetpack. Use that to fly up. If you're very conservative with your jetpack, you can savior it for basically the whole episode. Except for this one, because they steal your items at the end of this level. <laughs> Uh, so we gotta check the weapons at the door. Yes, I do indeed have weapons. Um, there's a little air duct. Hi there. Oh, that'll just long range the shotgun works. Uh, but yeah, um, pretty much, you know, the four nations lived in harmony. There was the Duke Nukem Atomic Edition. That's what I mean. That door is activated by that toilet. Yeah. I know. Um, and then, uh, until... What was it? Also, yes, you can indeed play billiards. Or you can just knock all the balls. Actually, can you knock... Yeah, yeah, you can just knock them all. There's no prize for knocking all the balls in, but it's just fun. Dude, I'm terrible at billiards. You'll never catch me playing billiards. <laughs> I'm doing a good job of it. Um, also, I love the freaking muddy boots where you got the mud pile and you can, like, make footprints depending on where you're looking. And they're just there. Forever. They even appear on this map as well. I love it. Such a fun attention to detail. You know, light switches. Um, like, you know, these, like, margarita glasses and stuff. You've got this lady here, which for some reason you can ask her to shake it and she doesn't at all. There's a Grand Theft Auto happening on the ceiling. Um, once you stand back here, a bunch of, uh, pig cops come in. Oh. You can indeed kind of deal with them. Uh, you're meant to check behind the counter for this key card. And I'm gonna get really thrown off by some of the later levels. I thought there was a secret around here, but I guess not. Uh, of course, more security panels. So you can see more things around the level. Very nice. I'm dropping out of the ceiling is like, oh my gosh, jeez. Um, scan the key card and we're into the uh, mm, the strip club. Me, me as a. Uh, also, I, I apologize for the seizures in this room. They know what they're doing. <laughs> uh, but yeah, um, how to get banned from YouTube or something. This uh, is a lady, she's shaking. You can interact with her, and she indeed. She indeed shows you her stuff. Uh, you can also get, pay money to these ones. You want to dance? It's just a reskin. Oh, that's not a reskin. Oh, it is a reskin. Yeah, it's literally the same sprite, but just facing the other direction and brown. And that one's red. Okay. Uh, I never know if like you're meant to jump through here because it says it's a secret, but it is indeed a. Uh, you know, the way you're meant to go, I guess? It puts you at the back of the stage, which lets you then, one, take out all these pig pops who are casually chilling up here. So it's also flicking the switch, which opens the curtains, revealing <laughs> the star of the show, another pig cop. There we go, lots of it's taken out already. Um... Use this newly raised platform to jump to the end, where I guess, you know, burn your ammo somehow. Just pick cops everywhere, oh my gosh. The pistol is just. It's a bit slow. And you find all eight secrets. Oh. Eight 
secrets, because I know this is the end of the level. Um, this is one. Um, I'm hearing like a door open behind me, I don't know if that's related. The steroid pills is also one secret if you collect them, because yeah, the moment you try and cross this line, you, you know, level tries to end. Um, so I love how, you know, it's kind of cool, but it's like, yep, that is definitely a wall. I'm not going to see above that. What am I doing when I hit F7? Oh, view mode. Oh, okay. Uh, okay, where are the secrets? Can I find the secrets? Uh, oh, the, in the next... Oh, true, yeah, because I'm still, I'm still holding on to my steroids. Uh, okay, where's the other secrets? I'm very certain there's a secret in this room that I just do not know of. Like, the cash register feels like something important. Mm. I don't know, not necessarily. Uh, I want to say, like, this wall really, like, screams out to me. Like, it really does. I don't know what's up with that. Um, there's, you know, this is where we went. There's a secret in the stream dance room that opens up the hidden door up on the stage. Secret in this room. There's that, uh, there's that up there, which is sort of just, you know, you can just jetpack up here to count as a secret. But there's probably a better way to get down there. Actually, you could probably just do a jump, can't you? Like, from up here. Mm. Feels a bit weird, but okay. Not, not this curtain. In, in that room, a red button. Uh, in the main room or the strip room? In that room, a red button. Hidden door. Secret. In this. Not referring to it. Sorry. The stream dance room is not this room, was it? I don't see a button in here. in the corner, in the corner. I'll check the other room just because I, I'm like, which room are you referring to? Oh! No, that's just the door to go in. Like, yeah, they, the key cards are all double-sided. I mean, imagine, like, one of these walls opens up. Ah! Yeah, okay. Just an invisible wall. That's what it is. There you go. And then that's, that's just a flick it open and off. Okay, one other secret, one other secret. <laughs> I feel like it's way out in the, in the beginning part of the level. Do I know where the secret is? Um, uh, like, what am I missing out in there? Oh, boy. Uh, feels a bit fancy, but nah, I don't think that's, that's it. Uh, I mean, I'm missing a few enemies as well, so I'm just curious if, like, where is it? I can hear him out, maybe? I don't know. Oh, hi there. Where did he come from? Who knows? Uh, you can destroy those palm tree tops. These ones out here. And they turn into poles. Or just that one, I guess. Not very curious. Not very curious. Uh, I'll call it. I'll call it. <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll move on because I don't, I don't want to be in like episode one for the whole stream. I, I sort of want to clear out this game in three streams and then we'll try and do all the extra content. So once you stand here. They're technically enemies. <laughs> now it's one enemies left. Next level best secret, it does. Alright, let's get off this electric chair, which you're on, and you have 
Zero weapons. Also, let's uh. Did you do it? But you can't kick a guy. Which doesn't really work the best. So maybe we gotta run and get an item. I believe if you. There's something you can do, you can interact with. I wanna say it's the switch back there. Oh, he can't hit me. He can't hit me. I'm good. Come on, come on, come on, come on. There you go. There you go. There you go. Lowers that, gives you the shotgun right then and there. And then he proceeds to blow up the wall behind me. Also, I love how this is, like... I've never... Okay, real talk. I've never been in a freaking, like, electric chair room. Like, ever. I think maybe I've been to, like, an abandoned prison once. Uh, I don't think I've seen one with a, like, an audience stage right in front of it. With a curtain, mind you. With a curtain. That just opens and closes. Aren't these game designers wonderful? Uh, they've obviously taken all your stuff, so you're gonna have to... Do your best to try and find find it all again, but we'll get there. Ten secrets, by the way. This game loves its secrets. It's so weird playing, like, Quake and all this stuff. And it's like, yeah, there's, like, barely any secrets any anywhere. At, well, maybe not Quake 1, but Quake 2 is definitely. Um, there's a... Ooh. Where is it? Uh, but we've got a little symbol on the ceiling there. And uh, if you uh, shoot this button... Preferably, preferably I'm on the right spot of the, the map when the button goes up. Here we go. Rise. We grab ourselves some atomic health and uh, <laughs> enter the null area on the ceiling. Yeah, this, <laughs> it's weirdly pushing me a bit, bit close into everything. Okay, but also behind this button. Oh. Behind this button, if you are... Interact with the... I'm hearing him. Hi there. Yeah, there you go. Kick... Nope. Wrong window. Also wrong window. Where is it? It was in this room, right? I swear it was in this room. It definitely is in this room. I'm trying for it. I'm trying for it. No, no. It's, it's not like that secret, is it? There you go, I don't know why that didn't interact for a while. That opens up this, like, back corridor, which is all red and stuff. But I love that you come in here. Oh my gosh! That's one Doom Space Marine. One Doom Space Marine. Doobie. And then gives you the chain gun right here and there. So, very, very nice. And for some odd reason, you can invert the cross. Very, very fun. Very, very cool. Continuing on down this little pathway, we've got lots of pick pops in the way. Oh yeah, I forgot to really. So anyway, so there was uh, <laughs> Duke Nukem Atomic Edition for the longest time. Introduced, I think, in 2011. It. Uh, I have no ammo again. This is gonna be fun. Oh. I'm gonna kick him. Oh, where'd he go? Kick him. He's giving me pistol ammo, but I don't have a pistol. Aye. There you go. <laughs> In the church. I feel like you, your stream is maybe like two minutes delayed. Or I'm two minutes early. One of the two. Uh, there you go. Get the blue key card. Um, so introduced 2010 or 2011. Uh, Devolver Digital release uh, the Duke Nukem 3D Megaton Edition. Uh, this contains not only the, you know, the Duke Nukem Atomic Edition, but also the expansions all in uh, one uh, kind of bundle, and it's got this kind of, you know, source port that works okay. I can aim. I can hit this guy. Now you gotta watch out as well, because you're gonna start seeing these trip mines in places, and you can easily just... Oh, you could shoot them. Okay, we're gonna avoid them. We're gonna avoid them. Uh, they're in kind of annoying places, though. Um, 
So you're gonna have these guys on the back of the force field who can hit me though. Or hit each other. No excuse. Four secrets still in the church room, steroids in the space marine corner, armor is only three. Oh, there's a fourth one in there? Really? Well, cause, oh, sorry, secret number one was, uh, I didn't even get the steroids. Oh, I did get the steroids. Where's the other one? Because, uh, secret number one was, um, outside on the chair. So what am I missing out in here? I got no clue, man. <laughs> I'm looking at this going, uh, I don't suppose it's shooting this guy. I mean, it didn't count as a secret, but that's kind of cool that that's there. It's in the roof. Not as in, like, in that part, right? <coughs> like, not, like, in here, in here, because this is, like... <laughs> this is, like, the, the extremity of the level kind of creeping in right here. And it's not on the outside, is it? No. You're not leading me on rabbit holes, are you? <laughs> Every time I'll say a message and then I'll just be like, Okay, time to run to the rest of the level because Duke not runs really fast. Like the levels are, you know, they're not like Quake 1 level of small, but you run so fast, it's like kind of cozy. You found it. Oh, it... But it didn't up the secret counter in the bottom left. <laughs> it didn't up the secret counter. I don't know what's a secret and what's just a very, very cool goodie. I want to go up the wall, dang it. I love these doors, these little diagonal doors. Um, so in here is a little atomic health. And if you keep going down, we uh, find ourselves in this wonderful little tiny room with a little tiny hole with more RPG ammo. And this is actually a jail cell that I proceeded to not go into. And you can also pee in the corner. Uh, much better. I love how it's just connected there, you know. Mm. Just cash. Anyway, watch out, you know. Trip mines everywhere. Um, we can indeed jump into here, where... Uh, You may potentially be screwed if you wait long enough. Not screwed, screwed, but uh, screwed. Just singular. Man, these these pickups trying to shoot the force field here. What are they doing? Oh, hi there. So I keep forgetting as well, there's a little uh, thing around here. Anyway, Megaton Edition, it's got all the stuff in the game. Um, it has its own kind of 3D renderer, so it sort of looks like this. Like, this is not the purest form of Duke Nukem 3D, but I think it's, you know, everyone accepts this kind of aesthetic. Um, click the switch, by the way, and uh, you'll open up either no walls or all the walls. But I think we got the yellow key, and so we can go to, uh, that's a red key, yellow key down here. Hi there, by the way. Um, introduce, uh, yeah, the 3D Realms Anthology. Sometime in, I think, 2013 or 2014, 3D Realms came back after liquidation, I think. After, um, not making Duke Duke forever in 13 years. Uh, so, uh... But they came back and they were like, we're going to do a bundle which has all of our 3D Realms games. Uh, all 32, or maybe it's not all of them, but it's a lot of them. At least a lot of the ones that they have uh, rights to, which includes uh, Duke Nukem 3D and Shadow Warrior. And some other ones, uh, like, um, uh, what's the one that I know of? It's the one where you, you fly a plane. I don't know. So, uh, for a company called 3D Realms, they sure do make a lot of three-dimensional games as well. Very nice. Uh, but the 3D Realms version of Duke Nukem uh, 3D is uh, virtually a, uh, well, it's the Atomic Edition and all the expansions automatically hooked up to eduke32, which is a community source port that people do like. Um, 
I don't think, I don't believe e Duke pushes the engine, like, you know, in, in engine breaking ways. It seems pretty, pretty normal and fair. Um, and then uh, come 2016, uh, Gearbox Software uh, is like, we're angry that you make money off Duke Nukem because we have the Duke Nukem license, not you. So they said, you can never sell Duke Nukem 3D again. Devolver had to take down their version of the game. We're in control. Oh, okay. I love this face. I love this bridge here as well. I love how like this is this is the same level where I was on the um the electric chair like two seconds ago. I love it. Um so if you turn this around the right way, uh you can catch one little tiny tiny hole here, which just drops you out here. <laughs> you know here um but also if we turn that back around we should be able to maybe get to the <laughs> maybe get to these little side rooms which are probably going to have pickups in them Hi there. and uh this will disable the two cell block rooms off to the sides or at least the force fields you can even see it he's chilling there he's waiting he's waiting for just you oh and we're also gonna need to go out that one door um so Gearbox said, no, you cannot sell the game anymore, uh, so, oh. Oh, do I not have pipe bombs? Oh, this is gonna get awkward, isn't it? Because you can technically run past. You can't live while doing it. We'll come back to it later. Or we'll just jump it, one of the two. Because that's just like, this, this door up here. Eh. We'll get up there, one day. Uh, anyway, uh, open up these doors. No one saw that. <laughs> uh, so yeah, the Devolver Megaton Edition, can't sell it. The 3D Realms itself, their anthology, can't sell that. I don't know how Gearbox just somehow has the, uh, ability to prevent people from selling versions of games they made. Uh, and then in return, Gearbox, and for a br brief moment of time, you could not buy Duke Nukem 3D. You can still buy other games in the 3D Realms Anthology, including Shadow Warrior uh, Redux and Shadow Warrior, the 3D Realms Anthology version of Shadow Warrior. Uh, but you cannot buy Duke Nukem 3D, which is a bit of a shame. Until 2016, the Duke Nukem 3D 20th Anniversary World Tour release, which includes uh, the first... Well, the Atomic Edition's four episodes and an exclusive fifth episode featuring uh, new voices from John St. John, who does Duke Nukem's voice. Uh, this is, you know, <laughs> you know. And this is where your pipe bombs are hiding, as well as also crack open some walls, step past the fire, more pipe bombs. And this uh, opens up a way into literally the end of the level. I always find it's like curious that this is like here because it's just... I think I'll climb aboard. Go climb aboard. Uh, but you might be wondering, well, if you didn't go out a secret, how do you get here? And uh, I'm pretty sure there's just a door open around here as well as scuba diving gear. Yeah, we can open this door. <clears throat> From this side, I guess. Ooh, interesting. We'll keep exploring around a little bit. Particularly, I have my pipe bombs. I can actually... Oh, not even... Pipe bombs, I could literally just... Oh, yeah, I could do pipe bombs. Eh. There we go. Um... There you go. It's the secret alien plan. Secret in the yard. <laughs> that looks a bit familiar, doesn't it? Maybe that's where they're in indicating that's the intentional way to leave secret up there. Oops. Oops. Every time. I don't have my jetpack back, so... Groovy. More pipe bombs. Uh, I didn't go into any of cell block one as well. 
that, so... Um, now, interestingly, there exists a version of Dudukum, so if you don't like the Gearbox software, uh, where, sorry, where cameras, you can jump in the middle of the wall inside a secret tunnel. Ooh. They, they do the secrets so nicely in this game, I swear. Um, we have this little hidey hole open, so, yeah, so up on the camera parts, I assume you gotta be outside to do that, so I, I guess we'll go out this way. Out we go, through the fire and the flames. Through this big long tunnel, which may potentially house a secret that I'm just not paying attention to, but I love how it's underneath this whole yard as well. And here we go. I don't know what's going on there. It's just kind of happening. So, okay, what are we doing? We're jumping on the, the, the things, because you can jump up here. Who wants Pipe some? bombs. And you probably do it on the other side. Or you could... Ah. Ooh, very nice. Lots of health. I picked up my pistol at some point. I don't know when that happened. Don't need the pistol. You got lots of explosive weapons. It's great. There we go. So we got this wonderful submarine right here. Anyway, you got this uh, wonderful as well underwater kind of swimming mechanic in the game. It's still technically the room under room, like you don't see through the water. But uh, the effect is real fun and nice because then it's like you can put yourself up and rooms just suddenly are bigger on the inside. Inside the sub is one secret too. I guess see it right there. Yeah, there you go health and uh, whatever's going on in there. Danger, high voltage. It's like, missing two secrets. I think that's alright though. We did a good job. Anyways, to the end of the level. Oh, I can also use that scope here to watch outside. I should do that next time I play it. <laughs> yeah, I my new one. I should have known. Oh. Don't look at that. Anyway, uh, the place starts filling up, so what do you gotta do? You gotta put in the, the exit codes. There you go, exit code. Uh, get yourself out before your scuba diving gear kicks in too hard. And now we're good. There's a button under the exit button that opens it up. Lots of enemies up the top here. Uh, it's lots of, lots of things to shoot at over here. Um, as well as there's also a couple of enemies down here. Off the brains. Under the water. Under the water. Uh, this guy's just chilling. I love the effect as well of, uh... You know, the, the submarine filling up and the... Sound of the octa brains, wherever they're coming from. They're coming from somewhere. Got this little hidey hole over here as well that opens up and we have to climb up onto this ledge, which has a required key. Some. As well as also, if you're a pro shot, take that, take that. I hate more enemies. But if you're really good as well, you can jump in and crouch in for some reason. I don't think, I don't think you really need to be in them at all, but hey, you know, it's fun. That's not a secret, is it? Nah. I thought it was. It ain't. <gasps> oh. Now I'm curious. Now I'm curious about the other one. It totally is on both of them. <laughs> very nice. Very, very nice. Okay, now I'm double cautious because it's like we had a secret inside a secret. They got me there. Um, so anyway, there exists a uh, a digital storefront for some game called the Zoom Store. Uh, not connected at all to the uh, Zoom, the uh, you know the publicly traded company that uh, creates telecommunication software that people use a lot during the lockdown. Uh, this is a different store. The Zoom Store managed to get with 3D Realms an actual lifetime license to sell Duke Nukem 3D the Atomic Edition. So, 
hilariously, if you do want an old version of Duke Nukem the Atomic Edition, because you seem to think that the Duke Nukem uh, 20th Anniversary Edition is got the worst mouse acceleration you have ever seen in any video game, and you just never, ever, ever want to play it, cough, cough, well, you can buy that version. You can buy the, the, you know, the actual Atomic Edition and go for that. But the expansions to Duke Nukem 3D are currently lost media. Well, not lost media, but, like, no one sells them. Actually, I think the Zoom Store sells them. Yeah, the Zoom Store still sells them. So, but what a strange, like, scenario that they're in. Where it's like, you can't buy most of, not most, but you can't buy a lot of the Duke Nukem 3D content, the official stuff at least. Now, there's a lot of unofficial Duke Nukem 3D content because like most, you know, great games at the time, there's a lot of, um, inspired kinds of things. If you stand here, a little claw comes to grab you and then kind of locks you in here. And you just get shot by this guy. And if you stand around here, uh, the claw comes by and grabs you yet again and drops you off here where you'll find this wonderful room hiding up here which is uh, how you get in here as long as a, as well as a red key card keep going around because why not where did these guys come from I was right there who knows um but yeah, I think that's the current state of Duke Nukem 3D releases. Uh, there is no real definitive edition. I'd probably say the definitive edition is the 3D Realms release, um, just because you have all the main bits of content. But uh, don't worry, I will get around to the Duke Nukem 20th anniversary levels as well, eventually. We're going to try and play all the official content at some point over the next few weeks. At least before Halloween kicks in, which is in like eight streams time. So it's all good. Uh, this would then just put you down over here, so it's all good. Now, this is a fun little mechanic here. Use the key card and a little flashy thing. Oh, and you have now shrunk into the ground, which doesn't really like it when you look down. Wander around though, and you'll come up to this little tiny room. But you can't shoot them because you're tiny. So you gotta wait until you grow big again. And then I stood in the face of another one. Whoops. <coughs> You're gonna, you're gonna need to interact with this lock eventually when you're big. There you go. Very important. Uh, I don't believe there's anything chilling in this room. I'm just gonna... Yeah, no, I think, I think this room is pretty, pretty contained, self-contained. But I love this, like, just sudden mechanic of, like, shrinking and having to go through these little tiny corridors. Which is something that, uh... Return in, uh... Duke... Oh, nice. Nice. Okay. It's something that returned in Duke Nukem, uh... Forever. As, like, a proper mechanic. There's a whole sequence of the game where you're a little tiny... Little tiny Duke. And you gotta watch out, because these suits, instead of trying to shoot you, they just try to crush you. It's kind of fun. Uh, but yeah, no, I think the first time I played the game was probably around, like, 2012, 2013. And, um, I was playing a lot of, like, older, uh, shooters at that time, so, uh, it was just kind of interesting, you know, what's the variety of them? What are they all trying to do? Um, watch out for mines. I don't think these guys can really hit you when you're above surface. Like, they just exist in a completely different plane of being. Although when you do go above surface, and it's suddenly like a very different bunch of enemies shooting at you. And you got a little toxic goop there. Uh, one of the power-ups I picked up as well is the, uh, the boots. So the, the scuba deer, uh, gear, sorry, the, um, the air tank and the, uh, boots. Uh, the boots protect you from toxic flooring, and the scuba tank you can breathe under water. They activate automatically, you don't have to be activating them. Uh, which also means at some point I'm gonna run out of scuba deer. Uh, scuba- oh my gosh, I can't, I can't say- I'm saying deer too many times. Um, anyway, find this little area over here, and, uh, hit the button, which should, uh, raise the water level a little bit. As well as also, uh, there you go. That should let you, uh, come up a little further here. Let's just stand up here. You know where this is going. Everyone likes breaking more walls. 
a secret, apparently. And another secret. And another secret. And it just leads back up to the start of the level. <laughs> you know, you know, the start of the level. Press this button and uh, you'll have a, uh, a wonderful waterfall. You'll lower the water level again. That's a curious little evil waterfall. Eh. Jump into this little tiny room over here, and man, I can't see anything. If only I had my night vision got- wow, that really doesn't help a ton, does it? Groovy. More secrets though, I tell ya. It's all great, so... Um, it does really help you see enemies, though. I think the whole point is that I'm meant to drop down again, though. So, back down again. Uh, now I still can't open that door. But, uh, I believe we have... Ouch. No, that's not the colors acting weird. That's just what night vision looks like, okay? Jeez, guys. Jeez. Here, there's the jump over there, which then lets me go into the room to push the button. Was it just because I missed that one... That one thing and I didn't open the, the floodgates? Yeah, it was just because I didn't open the floodgates. Nice. Anyway, lots of, the, lots of these octobrates come out. Works. And they're very loud when I'm hitting them all at the same time. Uh, keep your fingers on on the uh, jump and crouch buttons as well, because you're going to be pressing it a lot as you're swimming through anything, really. This also lets you lets you join up, kick back in here. Very extensive underwater section as well. I love this. There's something kind of fun and vertical about this game. Doom. Doom's levels are generally a bit flat, but there's something kind of wonderful about how... Oh, are you ready? There's just like a small tiny gap there. There's something wonderful about like just... Like the location variety in the Duke of 3D levels. Now I can hear things all of a sudden. Yeah, what, a, what a curious uh, designer level. Um, so anyway, head down here, and hey, you see that? Find open this wall to find a teleporter? That's right, it puts you, um, above where these things are at, sort of-ish. Not really, kind of. It's not really that, it's, it's actually, uh, I don't believe there's anything through there. Nah, not at all. Um, but it leads you out pretty much the opposite side, where you'd come out one waterfall. Come out the other one. Hi, I would love to hit you. It's not worth it. There we go. Yeah, no, this game this game's a good trick. I would highly recommend it, but is there a definitive version of the game right now? It's probably the Zoom version. Um, hitting that opens up a door. Let's see, where are we going? I think we're going up the... Nope. Up the other one. There you go. Look at this wonderful little hallway that just opened up. And you can just press this button, which uh, does something, and you're like, huh, what's up with that? And, uh, as a reminder, almost every single... Try me. Oh. He knows. He knows how to dodge. They're too good. Ouch. Uh, but you can shoot these buttons. Which is very cool. You can do that, so... Hi there. Anyway, in we are. Man, these guys are everywhere, aren't they? I don't think there's anywhere this many uh, enemies on the other difficulty levels, but, uh, yeah. 
We're gonna use the protective boots a bit to go through the go through the waist a little bit. Uh, but yeah, no, this uh, this is nearing the end of the level, although uh. Hi, how's hearing things? Do you want to hear things? I don't think you needed to hear things, guys. I would really like for these guys to be gone so that I can hear the wonderful music that's on this level. Even if it's all MIDI. That is the only thing, is that the music is gloriously MIDI. I love this wavy water as well, it's just a fun effect. Anyways, follow along the path a little bit. Don't get uh, tricked out by uh, there being a explosive wall there. Because otherwise you won't catch the very, very last part of the level. That's right, it's the end of the level. But if you're heading here, you can uh, teleport back out to literally the top if you wanted to. But wait, don't actually end the level. You're gonna walk back just that little tiny bit and blow up the wall and walk inside where you'll find two enemies Blow it out your ass. and a wonderful sound effect Mwah, love it love it hit the button and uh, you'll find yourself into a secret level this is the only secret level of the shareware episodes but uh, it's good fun that you get one this is launch facility uh, which uh, as uh, the, the name may imply it is a facility that launches I guess some. Where is it? I don't know what's going on there, but sure. This is not poop that you can swim in, though. It's unswimmable poop. Um. But yeah, oh, it's good fun. Whatever happened to games with secret levels and other kinds of features like that? Who knows? Games are sometimes a little bit afraid of players missing content. It's like, oh, we gotta make sure players see it all. It's like, bro, most people aren't gonna see that armor over there. Or they're gonna see that there's only four secrets on this level. I don't know why this wall is blacked out. Maybe we'll figure it out in a bit. I love this kind of room as well, just like... A wonderful staircase kind of room. And yes, you can indeed shoot the turrets. You don't have to use explosives if you don't want to. Oh my gosh. Where are these shots coming from? Are they in there? Oh, you are all in there. And now he's teleported somewhere. Eh. Eh. Got there in the end. <laughs> uh, so what's the code? Uh, try literally every combination. You'll eventually, you'll eventually hit it. I'm gonna get medieval on your ass. You can turn off force field one. So head back around, and uh, now force field one is down. So we can head up. I don't know who, like, the names of the people specifically who designed each level, unfortunately. I'd really love to um, note that. But, uh, the wiki is probably a great place, or, um, just various other resources. I think a lot of people do love this game. It's wonderfully cherished. <laughs> I, I think a lot of people love this game as if it's, like, not cited, like, daily by people. Ooh, mysterious lights. Is the music incredibly quiet? It is incredibly quiet, isn't it? There's plenty of ammo, though, I'll tell you that. They're finally back into it, so... Hit this keycard, and uh, you can now, I guess, activate this rocket at some point. That's right, we're gonna save those two people who are stuck on the ISS, because Boeing aren't building anything that works. That's right, that's right, tick off the Boeing card, I've mentioned Boeing today. I always find it's like, it's curious that so many people have ripped into Boeing in the past, like, few months. And it's like, I'm not sure if it's just like a reporting bias, like people are like, just hearing it more, and now they're like, noting it all the time. But like, anytime like, there's a plain like, mishap, 
let alone a disaster. Because sometimes there are disasters. It's like, man, you know, everyone's like, oh my gosh, come on, Boeing. I guess part of it is that they have a... Are they a Monopoly Boeing? I don't really know of any other big ones. Could be a duopoly, but... Drop a pipe... Oh. Maybe you want two pipe bombs. You can actually crawl in here as well. Um, which is pretty cool. Anyway, we've got this massive rocket, which I've uh, set up in the previous, uh, you know, room. Oh, we're not going to need that just yet. Actually, yeah, we are. What is happening here? Who knows? Uh, this isn't active yet, so maybe it's uh, somewhere else. We this was activating like light switch. This was activating the um, the doors to like walk in and out. I love the lighting change as well. It's very nice. Moving sectors is like such a you know big feature. Yeah, confusingly, this is a lift as well. And you have a jetpack, because why not? Come in here. Let's rock. Use the use the. <laughs> gonna rip him a new one. It's gonna rip him a new one. I love this like perspective as well. It's like you, you just teleport in to use to use the key card. You can't activate the missile without a key card. Now head into the uh, restricted area. Now it's all red. We have a, a switch. On three. One. Ah. Whoops. <laughs> well, now we can write this lift down. Pretty long lift down, ain't it? Whoop. Yeah, I ripped this rocket. Classic Boeing. But yeah, the story of the um, the Boeing like passenger um, or like testing for the passenger flight, and just like how it's like, yeah, there's two people who got onto the ISS and were meant to like leave like a week later, and the freaking pods don't work, and they're just sort of up there right now. And like, I mean, people are trying to get them down, but they currently don't have an ETA because they don't have a ship. So it's kind of like, oh my gosh. They should be fine up there, but, uh... That's a bit terrifying, isn't it? It's like, imagine... Dude, I, I can't imagine being in that scenario. It's like, imagine being stuck anywhere. It's like, people know you're there, but they just cannot get to you. And it's like, you're not like in, you know, radio silence communication, but it's just like... Ah, oh, it's such a weird feeling, I guess. I found no secrets, but I managed to kill every enemy. The secret level has to lead back into something that looks like the existing level. So, uh, we're done here. That's that's a nice little fun secret level. Not as big as uh, some of the other levels, but it's alright. So, we're on to the final level of episode 1, The Abyss. Long Beach? I've never been to Long Beach. I've never been to really much of LA. Or really any of it. I only went to Disneyland like once. And I'm just like stuck in Disneyland, you know, areas. So the Abyss is a wonderfully large level. Massive canyons, lots of poop everywhere. You gotta love it. Hi there. I've bound the med kit to right click by the way, so if I ever accidentally trigger it, you know why. Uh, but we've got this, uh, wonderful canyon here. A key card and some ammo and touching a cactus. Oh, I was like, it's like, who's shooting little pellet shots at me? A little tiny turret up there. Who is indeed an enemy, by the way. Uh, looking up and down it, it, in the original game is a little weird because it's like you hold down a look up and down button. It's not like analog, so there's a lot of vertical aiming still with the uh, original release of the game. Um, I hope you can kind of see like one of the joyous parts of the build engine level design though, uh, or rather geometry, and that is um, 
everything can be sloped in the game. D Doom cannot do sectors over sectors, and it cannot do slopes. And this game can do, you know, some pretty primitive slopes, but it's like, it's good fun to just like see like, ah yes, you know, we have a, we have a sector here, and it goes down like this, and that's it. And then the whole game just renders it based on that, so. And what's kind of surprising is that this game is also, uh, or rather this engine is written to make making levels such a breeze as well. So there's a lot of, um, I mean, the build tools, there's a, there's a map editor just there. You don't even have to like second guess. It's just, it's just there. Um, I think I gotta go down the slippery slope here. Um, and, uh, back in the oldie DOS days, or at least, you know, right as DOS was sort of ending, um, Oops. It was just for goodies. I do have the key card though, so it's probably exactly where I need to go. Back up the slope. Yes, I'll greet you, Mr. Pig Cop. I don't know what I'm looking at in here. I knew there was a guy. I really don't know what I'm looking at in there, it's too dark. Right there. Um, but yeah, whereas like Doom didn't have a public like map editor for quite a while. Some of the earliest Doom maps were created by absolutely dedicated people who did like, uh, sector compiling or, yeah, yeah, sort of compiling using a hex editor. He was just looking at the map files and going, hey, if I can make my own map file that, like, fits in this pattern. Cool. This is a little, uh, interesting, like, ahead of the time secret. It looks like it feels like, hey, 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 cheap shot. I think this opens up later in the level, but... Uh, anyway, let's jump over to this, uh, San Andreas Holy Fault, shit. which, uh, casually proceeds to pull a San Andreas Fault, and, uh, starts opening the heavens, basically. And there was a cactus down there, which totally would have had a lot of sunlight being down there, so that's fun. Do we get anything for being up here, or? No, this is the old ledge. Straight from the gold ledge. Oh. Look at that. Ah. Yeah, there's a, lot of, there's a lot of fall damage to be had in this level. But again, I, I think there's something wonderful about the uh, amount of verticality in uh, not only just this level, but really all of them. I'm never going to pick that up again. <laughs> so if we now wander down here... Now the level looks a little different. It's all sort of cracked open here. But yeah, this kind of, like, level interactivity and stuff. This is what made Duke Nukem, pretty much. It was, like, just having these really, really, like, intricate levels that also weren't, like, the most abstract kinds of things. It was, like, this is a prison. This is a, a like, a street. This is a strip club. It's, like, it all looks like it should. Or at least something recognizable, even if it still has the, uh... You know, level design abstracted to use like weird little side rooms and don't question why the strip club has like just regular metal walls. I don't know. I pass them over to me. But that's what kind of gives this game its charm and it sort of embraces it pretty nicely. Uh, successive build engine games, like the aforementioned, um, uh, Redneck Rampage, uh, Blood and, uh, Shadow Warrior, um, also do things in its own kind of cool ways, but certainly they are very purely the engines that ran on this game. Or right, sorry, the game that ran on this engine. Where is it? Where is it? So if I think if you interact with this... Secret... Secret staircase. We 
have another little button here, which, uh, well, you can see what's happening here. No, that's a jump. That's a jump. There you go. It fires a little shrinky projectile at you, allowing you to, I guess, leave if you want to. But hold on, you did indeed see a little tiny, little tiny corridor over here. This just opens back up into itself again. Okay, cool. I'm glad that I just reminded myself of that. <laughs> Thank you, me with memory problems. So why did we do all that? Well, this is an area that we uh, weren't in before. Well, maybe. Yes. So that's where you need to go in order to continue the level. Uh, obviously, all waterfalls hold secrets. Every single one of them. No exception. It's not even a secret, it's just like, hey, we want to put some ammo in here. Um, Hail to the king, baby. Yeah, here's our uh, mountainside and where we sort of stopped earlier. Where am I hearing dudes? Hi there. Little tiny room with them. I was like, where is he hiding? There he is. I assume you can close it up on yourself. There you go. Very nice. Um, but yeah. Uh, so for reference with other uh, build engine games, Shadow Warrior got the similar treatment of uh, Duke Nukem just because it is a 3D Realms published game um, and developed it. I think it, I'm not sure how many of the developers it shares. Maybe a lot of them. Um, but uh, unlike uh, Duke Nukem, Gearbox does not own the rights to Shadow Warrior. Uh, Devolver still does, so Devolver ended up making three remake titles, none of which I've played. i played the first one a little bit, but I have not played the rest, unfortunately. Um, your mighty protective boots protect you from lava, by the way, I just want to know. And you can also just use the jetpack and fly over it, so... You know, as you do. Um, uh, sh so Shadow Warrior not only exists in the 3D Realms anthology, but also the... Uh, the uh, Devolver Redux version does still exist, and yes, uh, uh, both versions do contain the expansions, I believe. Just two expansions, and, you know, there's nothing really that fancy afterwards, but hey, it's all fine. I like it. Uh, Redneck Rampage and its uh, expansion, Redneck Rampage Rides Again, are sold on Steam and GOG as uh, full-priced, they barely go on sale titles, and they're unabashedly DOS ports. There are no bells and whistles about those releases. Um, I'm pretty sure there's source ports available, but I haven't played Redneck Rampage, unfortunately. And uh, Blood, for the longest time, didn't have a source port. This one was published by um, Atari, actually, I think, published Blood uh, and developed by Monolith. Monolith, best known for later doing, I love this, like, just visual here. Uh, Monolith, best known for making uh, No One Lives Forever and um, eventually Fear. And then sort of being shunted to doing Middle Earth Shadow of Mordor. Shadow of War is sort of a very underwhelming title for reasons that are very obvious once you play it. Um, but they're a talented bunch and uh, Blood is a, a fairly well regarded title, although I do think the gunplay is rather awkward in that one. It's a, contra ah! it's a controversial opinion, but... I don't know, if you play it, you'll know what I mean. Alright, who is shooting me? Oh, hi there. There you go. Gotta watch your platforming. We're gonna have platforming in our uh, game that's a third title in a platformer sequence or a series. It is, you know, a boomer shooter through and throughout, but it is still a platformer at heart at times. I love, like, how insane the, like, colored lighting can get as well. Like, it's just, everything is red. All the enemies are red. The, the, the sky is red. Is the sky red? Mm, it's probably nighttime. Anyway, we have wandered over to this wonderful, uh, secret base. Apparently seeing a lot of people in hell. 
Uh, witness these uh, wonderfully large doorways and confusing. Excuse me. Oh, sorry. You had to hit the hit the button on the side wall in order to open it up. Uh, also, a little bit of uh, fun. <laughs> you can, if you're looking down, you can spot that transition jump pretty quick. Uh, but open this door and we shall indeed approach the end boss of the uh, of the uh, um, expansion now oh, sorry of the of the episode now interestingly uh, I'm just gonna briefly like save the game right here just so I've got it there um, but uh, if you no clip right here you're barely gonna see what I'm typing up here oh, hi there no, no. hi can I type no clip I'm just not typing anything Hi, yes, no, yes. Done. Okay, for reference, if you can no-clip back here, you'll find a, a button that leads into a secret level that wasn't ever put in. I can page up and page down, but I cannot type. I cannot type, is it because I'm in the game? Is that why? I wanted to type no clip just so I can show off this thing behind here, but I'll save it for later. Um, okay, so anyway, we'll just go on. This is the final boss of the episode. Turn on your jetpack and start flailing at him because he's just going to hit you anyways. Get him. There we go. We got him. And that's it. That's the end of the episode. I'm Duke Nukem, and I'm coming to get the rest of you alien bastards. I'm coming to get the rest of you alien bastards. Very iconic, very wonderful, and I love this like <laughs> 10 frames of animation ending, it's great. So, after wiping the blood and brains from his boots, Duke explored the alien ship monitor showed a titanic alien ship hovering above Earth with thousands of smaller ships offloading green cocoon-like pods. One showed them in close-up. They all held women still alive, just like the ones Duke encountered. Duke glowered? 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 In the pale green. Uh, monitor light and set the auto destruct sequence on the alien ship. He stared at the screen once again. No one steals our chicks, sneered Duke, and lives. Very, very nice. So that's it. That's the end of the first episode. Now, that's not going to be the end of the stream uh, because uh, the first episode is kind of short. So I'm going to do. A fair bit of the second episode and then we're gonna try and like get every single um, well we're, we're gonna try and clear off both episodes two and three in the next stream but we'll make some good progress to the second episode and then uh, we'll do the birth we'll do lunar apocalypse I don't know. We'll, we'll, we'll try our best so let's keep oh, going it's, uh, nobody steals our chicks and lives Woo! Woo! Apparently, I'm barely living. So, welcome to Polaris Outpost. Where we, uh, you know, have our little spaceship here and an RPG, why not? Uh, let's, uh, let's make a save spot as well, so. But yeah, part of the Earth defense. We're under attack. Help! You know, for a first level and it's got 20 enemies, you might be like, oh, okay. Barely any. And, uh, I guess the answer is yes. Oh, what was that? Just chilling there. More rockets. Hi there. How you doing? So, a lot of episode- in fact, actually, I think the entirety of episode 2 takes place in space. Because, why not? Space levels are cool. Everyone likes a good old space level. So imagine having lots of space levels. Exactly. How cool is that? You gotta have this wonderful backdrop of literally in space. Just 
Your spaceship is just a building. It's just a building. It's just a picture of a, of a spaceship. It's like the Saturn V just chilling out there. I love the Saturn V, like me not understanding spaceships is like, yeah, it's like a plane, but it's like big and uh, like, I don't even understand. <laughs> I'm like, why has it got like wings and all this stuff in the way that it is? I think it's just fun and iconic. It just looks great. So, we've got lots of doors and rooms above and under other rooms. And uh, here's a new enemy. He's not too bad, but he does have a chain gun kind of weapon, and that is gonna, you know, tear into you a bit quicker than maybe you expect. Also, scuba gear, because you're obviously going to encounter water in space. Groovy. Pipe bombs up here. Oh, hi there. But yeah, he doesn't have too much health, so it's not too bad. Uh. I think that's a switch down here, I just didn't activate. Maybe? There is water. A chain gun. Ah, here we go. And you get night vision goggles? Okay, I'll... I didn't even realize this was here. There you go. I'm finding secrets by the day. Ah, here you go. Here's your... Nope. I just hallucinated a switch. I just thought, ah, I thought I just saw a switch on the wall. Where is it? Oh, it's, it's duh, it's, it's key card because I'm up the top. There you go. So now we're good, right? I can just activate. Yeah. Activate the door on the far side. There we go. Up the lift we go. And it sort of warps you across the map just because it's easier to do that than to properly have a room above a room. That's how um, some people do it in uh, some different levels as well. It's just so much easier to just mirror the level. Also, everyone likes explosions in space. Ah. I thought there were only 20 enemies. You lied to me. I thought there were only 25 enemies. You lied to me. It just keeps spawning out of nowhere. Uh, okay, what's the code? Because this is just another series of on-off switches. Hold on. The 16 combinations, so we'll just, we'll just run through them all. There you go. Is that not a secret? I mean, it doesn't look like it, it could ever go anywhere, but just just as a curiosity. Uh, so I believe uh, Where is it? you can jump down here. Where it's uh, now also like it, it, it drops down into this room, which I love. Um, but underneath, you can activate the switch. Get a jetpack, which will be very useful for any point ever in the rest of the level. Now come back up, we can use that red key and get out of here, so... A fun first level and definitely a very different change of pace. I think some people definitely have a very mixed reaction to those kinds of enemies. Which you're gonna absolutely hate throughout the rest of this, uh... This, uh, one. I love how, like, oh look, it's the rest of the ship over there! Um, somehow. I'm not really sure how, but yeah, it's the rest of the ship. So... Anyways, to the end of the level. There we go. I missed every secret. The incubator. And I love how it just starts off with you flying in. This um this uh, engine has a a good uh fun um number of just flying in kinds of uh, platforms and things, which we'll experience over time. Uh, beware these drone enemies, because they'll occasionally decide to suicide bomb you, and they're not fun, and they make the same sound as, uh, other Doom enemies as well, so... It just sounds like you're playing Doom, but it's actually suicide drones. Very different kind of enemy. Very different kind of enemy. A very annoying one at that. 
but they're mostly only prevalent in this uh, expansion and sorry in this episode i don't even think they appear too much in the rest of you can 3d um maybe in episode four listen episode four is a you know what turns boys into men kind of scenario hi wow for me So, so much explosion. Cool. At least there's more pipe bombs and more secret room in the back with more armor. Very nice. 1138, 1138. Good to know. Very, very nice. We've already got two secrets already. Very cool. Uh, let's continue on here. Technically an Earth ship. Technically. Um, one thing I love about this engine as well is uh, lots of these... Uh, sci oh my god! Whoa! <laughs> How did he manage to pull that one off? I was watching that. I was watching that right there. <laughs> oh my gosh, jeez. Um, lots of these signs are implemented as decals. In fact, actually the blood splatters are effectively implemented as that as well. Um, so, whereas in Doom... Every single wall texture had to be the wall texture. Um, uh, the the build engine lets you basically have a texture and then also have a seizure room. I'm sorry. Um, the bakery, the armory, the bakery, the armory. Side note, by the way, uh, Chugga has officially finished his Fire Red Let's Play. He went back and did what he never never wanted to do, which is admit that he killed Entei. Accidentally, because of a bug, but it still counts. There you go, flick the switch. Open the supply cupboard. Grab, grab the health, because why not? Trigger some enemies in the process. Um, ow. The, every time. Every time. They don't do a ton of damage, although it could... No, they don't actually do a ton of damage, but they're just kind of annoying every single time. Every single time, you're just like... You just want to, like, move on with your life, and they're just there. So... Uh, we're also about to be introduced to everyone's favorite enemies. These little eggs uh, will sometimes... Well, actually, will very often at some point spit out these, um... But you can barely see them, and they're going to come out the other side as well, which will really throw you off. But they're like these little green goopy things. If you let them climb onto your face, they will absolutely mug the heck out of the camera. <laughs> I always feel so like, ugh, ugh. And they will eat things as well. It's like, ugh. Hold them down the mighty boot, you will basically be safe. Because they can't attack from a distance, and the moment they climb on you, you're kicking already. So you're good. And you can also shoot while kicking. Also, watch out, that's not a demon. Technically, that is still a babe. The floor is still poop. I always kind of jump every time I have, like, something wildly come up on the screen. I'm, no I'm not the biggest fan of, like, front face, like, it's not a jump scare, but it is, like, just a, uh, keep some distance, bro. You can, of course, destroy the eggs ahead of time, and they all count towards the kill counter, so it's not like there's going to be casual secret enemies showing up. Uh, but open the room, and uh, got a key card and a ton more of these suits where they came from. Let's get a few of them like that. Go, open the door, get on the floor, everybody walk into the dinosaur. You know, one of these guys is gonna like come through a window somehow. I have now normalized the water or made it go the other way or something like that. I think that's what the sign is indicating. Uh, but it just means that this wall is now open, which it wasn't before. Very, very nice. And, uh... Well, he's along for the ride, isn't he? 
That's just cruel having like some of these guys up here. I want to get back up. I want to get back up. Find jetpack. <laughs> I mean, that's why they put the the jetpack up there. All right, let's ride our our way back down. So we're right there. Yep. Oh, they're gonna be everywhere around here, aren't they? Excuse me. I'm just shooting my big toe every so often. He seems to not be taking the hits, does he? What the heck am I shooting at? Yeah, what am I what am I shooting at? The ground, I think. But uh, I did pick up the uh oh. Now in my territory. There you go. Got that. That's still there. Um, we're gonna have to jump into it. Look at all of them. Ugh. Just sweep through. I don't want them. Get them out of here. And yes, these eggs count as kills, right? Hold on. Yeah, 80 out of 81, but like, what is that? What is that shooting at me? Sorry, 80 out of 80. Oh, sorry, uh, you're at 81. Oh, sorry, you're at 82. Oh, sorry, you're at 83. You know what I mean? It's like... Oh. Well, that was fun. <laughs> Hopefully by this point I've proven I'm not actually a speedrunner. Because I'm not good at this game. <laughs> I mean, I'm good enough to play on, like, come get some. That's it. <laughs> if you want to watch me quick save scum a ton, I could probably do, you know, damn I'm good. But, that's, that's the difficulty, yeah, that's the one. That's right, there's so many of them. At the very least, you can blow them up pretty easily. Get him out of here. Where is this guy who was just chilling up here? Right there. So check it out, it's the Shrinker. Use it on some decently small enemies, walk up to them and it will just kill them for you. What a fun item. Or weapon rather. It's a proper weapon, it's great against the small enemies. It's not great against these guys. Can't shrink them when they're not organic, so. I appreciate it. I'm trying so hard to get this one guy that's like, yep, there's someone just right behind me. As well as also a lot of these guys underwater who, again, they don't care when they're underwater. At least your shotgun works underwater, you know? It'd be a shame if it didn't. <laughs> oh my gosh, they're everywhere down here. We were at like out 80 out of 80 kills. I worry that there's like a target number for the number of like kills in a level. This is the devastator. They're giving you all the weapons just right off the bat. Devastator's ammo is a little bit hard to come by, but it's good fun when you do get it. So, uh, but that is the level. Nice and chill, nice and fun. Yeah, no, good fun level. Let's rock. Now let us rock. Warp Factor. Keep sometimes saving on top. Hey, hey, I'm trying to, I'm trying to do a just separate the level save at the beginning. Thanks, guys. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Okay, all the health just gone because suicide bombers. Uh, I love this like little view over there. It's like, oh, what's going on over there? Um, very nice fun, but uh. 
more armory, more rockets, which would be great for. See you in hell. When they're dumb and they just sit there like that. Oh my gosh. I love how enemies learn how to dodge when it's kind of inconvenient for just me. What is going on in there, guys? Calm the farm. Calm the farm. Come get some. Pipe bombs, very nice. We got a lift. Very nice. I like how you can indeed pick up your pipe bombs again as well. Very, very nice touch. But there's something kind of fun and just like how it all works together this game. The levels, you know, they're fun and interactive, but the weapons themselves are fun and goofy as well. Because like, what exactly is, like, the theming of Duke Nukem? It's like, you're, you're a macho guy in an alien invasion, so therefore you just have all these, like, very wacky weapons all over the shop. Like, what is this? What am I looking at here? Screen. Holographic screen. It's all fun. Oh, hi there. This is a new enemy. He has a name. Probably oh, all of these enemies probably have names. But this guy, this guy, think of him kind of like a manky this. And preferably we don't take as much damage because that's sort of, you know, detrimental to my health. You can indeed shoot him with the shrink ray. Which is very, very ideal. Whereas, like, you know, try to try to hit these guys with a shrink ray. I love the glass breaking as well from, like, any surface. But yeah, good fun. Love it. Cool. Don't have the key just yet. We can't open that yet. But we can walk in here. Ha <laughs> I guess we're not going in there just yet. So in that case, we've probably got more to explore up here. Or I'm just going... Yeah, yeah, no, there's another... Another couple of rooms. Particularly we have a... The wonderful teleporting enemies room. What a curious room, eh? In it. I can imagine the ship has seen better days. And so is those health packs. But our blue key is hiding over there, so that's where I needed to be. But yeah, uh... So Duke Nukem 3D is probably a prime example of a, a, a topic that I've mentioned a few times before. Um, but it's always, always relevant. And that is games being taken off sale. Uh, Duke Nukem 3D in particular is the most confusing example because it's like, well, not not the most confusing because I think the the easy explanation is Gearbox wants to make their own version because they don't make money off you know other people's versions of the games, but they have the rights to apparently get them to not sell it. Uh, we got a freeze thrower, by the way. This is uh, another weapon. There's not too many more weapons if any more from, from memory. Um, but the freeze thrower is cool because uh, where on earth did the blue key go? Because it wasn't in here, was it? Oh. I think it was back up here. Yeah, yeah it was a little side room. It's just like a little freeze ray, basically. Find some enemies that aren't those suicide drones. Again. Oh, look, look, it's it's a room, it's a room full of them. I'll try my best, I'll try my best. I just hate them. They're just so hard to deal with and they're everywhere. There you go, there's a perfect, oh, nope. Come on, I've, oh. I want to use my, I want to use it. Did we get them all? Are we done? Yeah, okay, we're done. Alright. 
because it's bound to zero. You start getting a bit too many uh, weapons. But you can freeze them and just kick them. Very fun. It's a bit trickier to use, but hey, it's good fun still. <sighs> Keep hitting the messages off as well. Look at, like, what, what is this? What is this kind of enemy placement? The, the, okay, these guys are on something. These guys are, like, starting to get on my nerves. This kind of thing. I love this wonderful platform here. Damn, I'm good. Just wanted to super kill them in case. And then you just slide on over to the other side of the level. Oh, too far. Nah, that's the side of the level over there. We don't need to be there. And you can send it back if you want. Um, but yeah, this one is definitely a prime example of... Oh my gosh. Of, uh, like, it's totally not because of licensing. It's like, Duke Nukem 3D can be sold in perpetuity because it doesn't have anything licensed. In fact, it doesn't even have, like, ripped off music like, uh, like Doom does. Where is it? It's just literally, that's, that's it. That's the game. It's, it's Duke Nukem 3D. You know? And yet, somehow, it can be taken off sale. And it's purely because of, you know, like, a bit of company politics of just like, I want to make money on property, and one of the easiest ways is literally prevent ex other sales. I hate it. It's like someone put in the effort to make Duke Nukem 3D Megaton Edition, and Duke Nukem 3D the, uh... Duke Nukem 3D the, I'm, I'm, I'm being careful there. Duke Nukem 3D, the, the 3D Realms Anthology port. It sort of breaks my heart that it's like, hey, you know, they're gone. You can't play them anymore. Um, hi there. What are you doing? Where did he come from? Where, we got? Where did he come from? I'm not paying attention, I guess. Okay, they're just cheating at this point. None of these people exist beforehand, but now they now they all exist. Just walked into that one. There's just so many of the drone enemies. Oh my gosh. <laughs> People are going to get very tired of me complaining about drone enemies, but seriously, they're everywhere. You know what we need? A big enemy. That's right, that's just the boss right there. We got a bit more grunt though than last time. Also, uh, he doesn't have as much health as he used to have, but he is still apparently a threat to me. Wow. What have I got? What have I got that can help out? Not that. Keeping my distance, I guess. Fight of the ages, right here. And a wall. Ooh. There you go. It's not as bad. It's because I had a wall, though. <laughs> what a funky little room, eh? Alright, I just want to use the shrink ray on literally anything, and instead the game's like, No! We'll have the death drones. And you will enjoy it. Come get some. We got more Devastator, though. That's cool. Hey. Eh? I've just become Canadian overnight, apparently. I'm just saying A all the time. Yeah. Every time. Dude, I thought I heard him again. No, I did. I did hear him. Uh. <laughs> 
Part of it is potentially because I don't have armor. Part of it is potentially because I can't see, and I am very reluctant to use my night vision for some reason. Just let me hit, let me hit the dudes in the back, please. But, uh, yeah, you just gotta, like, sometimes spot the tiny little, uh, the tiny little secrets. First aid just casually being on the wall. Pills here. Uh, what else we got? You think there's probably a secret up here? Where is it? Oh, there you go. Is that world? fun sound, isn't it? Well, now we can see space. We are indeed in space. That is true. Yeah, what is it with, a uh, Do Gearbox themselves, like, Gearbox is sort of on my, uh, my, like, internal naughty list. It's not like a, oh, they're dead to me forever. I'll never ever play their games again. This force field is done, so we can run in. Um, Go, what are we doing? Oh, hi there. Well, I'm still running out of health, but we're doing okay. We're doing okay. So, anyways, end of this level. You know, I'm curious at this rate whether I can just do the whole episode. It is more levels, though. We had uh, five levels plus a secret level for episode... Um, uh, from, yeah, episode one. Episode two is nine levels, plus two secret levels. And I believe there is one secret level at the end of this level. No. Maybe. No, the next level. The next level, it's not this one, so. Okay, let's just, but we'll just keep going, because it's like, hey, you know, what was that? Eight more levels, and are already nine in. We'll see how well I do. We'll see how well I do. I can call it at any point. This level is uh, iconic to me because I am a big sucker for big vertical levels, and this is a very big vertical level, a BVL, if you will. Oh man, I can barely see anything. Do I dare just turn up the brightness? Because uh, I've been playing with the um. Hold on, is it in video mode? No. Color correction, probably. Color correction. Yeah, like... That's cheating, having the visibility turned up. And also, just taking taking hits there, but it's like, oh, like, good shit. Compare that to... One. See what I mean? It's like, you lose your darks. And you gain, like, seizures. Okay, I'd really appreciate- oh, there we go. That's a Nice. But I'd really appreciate, uh, not taking too much more damage. Everyone likes a goopy wall sound. Let's hear that again. Mmm. Delish. So, how does this level work, uh, structurally, it's, a, a big, tall room in the center, with lots of little- oh my gosh. The moment I think I'm doing okay with, just like, drones, they just get to me. So it's one massive chamber, with lots of bridges and lifts that, you know, it's linear, you'll, you'll find your way around. Or if you have a jetpack, you can skip the whole level. You can literally just fly up to the top, and you'll be done. Where's the fun in that? I'm so glad that I was like, oh, which weapon do I use? And it chose that one. I'm gonna use this shrink ray on more dudes. He 
electricity. Hail to the king, baby. Ah. Well, that wasn't quite what I expected, but sure. It just seems like a bit of a needless uh, walk around. I don't know, I'll just leave it there. Until they get hit by the shrink ray. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Uh, have I personally been bitten out by games being taken off sale? I think it's happened. I'm not gonna say never, but. Yeah, it's just rookie error as. It's like right there. He's right there. It's like it should be obvious this is about to show up. Um, okay, so what are we dealing with here? We've got walls, we've got, we're looking for a switch of some kind, because uh, that door is an opening. Um, at the end of this thing, it sort of makes sense if there's a switch high. Chillin'. It sort of would make sense if there's a switch somewhere in the middle. It's a bit weird there in particular, but okay. Come get some. Like here, for example sense. There you go. And up we go. Kind of long lift. Everyone likes a good kind of long lift. <laughs> it's a fun sound as well. Was that activating because I walked over here as well? What is that sound? Like, it's right there, but okay, sure. Uh, we got a bit of underwater because, hey, you know, what's a good space level without water? Click the switch. Grab a bit of health while we're at it. Yeah, there we go. And that's uh, opened up a lot of, a lot of rooms, a lot of different hallways. Is that doing? It feels like there's two switches. Oh, there we go. Very nice. Oh. Very, very nice. Oh, third person. Every time. It F6 is quick save, F7 is third person, and F8 is the messages, so that's why you might see those from time to time. I like how you gotta you gotta make the bridge platform come at you, so Oh my gosh. Okay, hold on. Just Rockets. Probably bad news for them to feel that. Kick that egg, I don't want that ugly egg. This is a funky kind of room. Because these people, these enemies just don't know when they should appear and when they shouldn't appear. So they just appear whenever, why not? Got a little room up here where. Oh, hi there. I think you can't really jump up there. It's such a weird little corridor. Oh, don't shoot her. But she is in the way. Sorry, girl. Usually Octobrain spawn when you kill the babes, but she was in the way of the health. That's on her. It's a very cool room. I want every single- when I have my secret evil villain lair in space, I want like a little space wolf like this.
trip bombs, uh, they're a bit tricky to pull off. I like them in theory, but it's same deal as Half-Life. It's like, I just cannot find like a great use case for them. Cause it's just like, you've got to, like you're constantly on the offense. You're constantly pushing into enemies. Hi there, by the way. I was like, does this guy know where he is? Um, you're constantly pushing forward into enemies. It's like, the use case of coming around and, uh, you know, letting the enemies walk into them doesn't come up as often as I'd really want them to, but that's maybe more how I play than anything. Uh, I love this little swirly in the center. Very, very nice. Again, that all this has done is like, I was just take the sector and then literally say the slope is in a different direction in the game's computation it'll just pull it off and it's done in a fairly like nice way as well because you can like legit if you try to make your own like game engine there's a lot of things where it's like eh, this is very very inefficient uh where's the switch for this thing put that open it for a hot second okay sure I was gonna say, is this the point in the level where... I take a hit from every single guy in there? Cause like, how much health was I on? I was on 100. Every time. I'm sorry, I'm quick save spamming. That's my problem. I would love to use more explosives on them, but it's like... It's such a waste. To do it so shoot yourself over and bring yourself up to this wonderful platform here where uh we'll proceed to have lots and lots of oh, oh. Man, geez, every time ah. i think i just landed on a suicide drone as well that's incredible. Yeah, blow up this thing in the center. Because apparently that's that's all that's all you have to do to take out alien bases. Blow it up. We're gonna have one of these guys here, which we can just fight in you know, the ordinary way of a bit of bullets. A bit of bullet spam never well it does hurt, but never hurts me. I'm the one doing the bullet spam. <laughs> you gotta be careful not to fall out. There you go. Anyway, here's a little doorway. Right, raise up again. And, uh, more of these dudes every time. They're not like, they don't have a trivial amount of health as well. They're not like actual jokes. This is such a weird kind of ledge. I, I don't know how I can like fully explain it, but like literally try and leap of faith. <coughs> And you'll land on this platform in the middle here. And then it's like, there's a jetpack. So it's like, at the very end, they just expect you to use the jetpack. Because you're gonna fight a couple of these dudes, and uh... It's kinda weird if you're not at least even with them. You can also probably see there's like other... Kinda ledges or things like that. But this room is a, uh... Yeah, it's, it's, it's good fun. Uh, also, they put a uh, big guy. Did they put a big guy back here? No, they did. But they do have these uh, other smaller guys. They're not the manky guys. Sorry, they're like little mini cheap cyber de. Oh my gosh! It's pipe bomb time, apparently. I don't believe they. Tr Does he try to melee you? I'm not. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna try and see firsthand. Also, you like the 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 babe baiting. Oh hi there. Oh hi there as well. They ended up getting me with the babe bait. Ah. 
every time. So I believe that's it. Let me just double check. I'm not about to miss a secret exit. I'm pretty sure that's not this level. It's the, uh, yeah, that's in the next level. So we'll get there. So let's uh, continue on, shall we? I find all the enemies. I don't find any secrets though. Oh my gosh, I hit the end of the saves. Occupied territory. That's right, more alien eggs. Everyone's favorite. But now we're back in the uh, space space. Groovy. So let's open the gate and oh, we've got lots of dudes. Oh my gosh, he's running, he's running at me. <laughs> uh, uh, so let's briefly uh, talk about what did I play this week. Uh, I played uh, two games. Uh, one game was called, a uh, little small game, called Metroid Prime. You may remember that from uh, last year on the channel. Um, and uh, it's a very large, spacious room, isn't it? With, uh, these are windows. Very, very nice. Actually, I want to see if I can get them with the, uh, the shrink rays. Be pretty good. Oh my gosh. No, 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 no. How could you? You just sent in all the drones. <sighs> ah. I just want to get him with the pipe bombs. It's not the... It doesn't even work the best. Uh, um, but yeah, no, Metro Prime. I've played it before. I've loved it to death. But uh, the recent retro achievements game to roll up. It's given me a great opportunity to go, hey, yeah, I get to play Metroid Prime again. And uh, Metroid Prime, it's still as good as I remember it from last year, because I play it all the time. Um, but the Retro Achievement Set did ask me to basically do two things I had never done before. Uh, one, beat the game really quickly. I, beat, I had to beat it in three and a half hours, which did require, thing number two, the set required a couple of, uh, well, one singular speedrunning exploit, which was to get the Space Jump boots early. I feel accomplished, I can actually pull it off now, but oh boy, oh boy did it require a bit of, you know, perseverance and willpower, and it's like, mm, that is certainly pulling off an exploit. One of the most famous exploits of all time, but still an exploit, and uh, I'm not sure if uh, that's in the spirit of the set to do that, I don't know. Uh, beating the game in three and a half hours, knowing that, I'd say that's fine, and even then, it cut it close with a general run through, but I think it can be done. That's, uh, that's fine. Uh, another one is kind of annoying, which is to get the charge beam um, after getting the thermal visor. Um, the part of the game, you can get the charge beam very early on, along with the morph ball bomb immediately after just the morph ball. Um, Look at this room. Look at this. Oh, it's gone, yeah. What these conveyor belt kinds of rooms? See, okay, you managed to survive that one. This cow as well. Jeez. Okay. Look, a key card. And a computer terminal with some screens on it. I sort of glance through the screens because even though it gives you some insight as to later in the level, eh, do I need it? I'm not. Um, but uh, yeah, no, you you can get the charge beam very quickly in the game, and it's convenient to get it around then. Um, but the charge beam is uh, needed for uh, especially to actually use the super missiles. You can't use the super missiles if you can't charge your beam. Makes sense. Um, I have no idea where the secret exit is in this level as well, so I'm sort of just playing it by ear. But I'd imagine it's most of the way through the level. Should it not? I don't know. Um, that's a fun door. 
Hi there. Again. Oh, there's three of them. There's three of them. Do we dare just fire the heck at them and hope for the best? Maybe. Gosh. You know what? If only I had a wet. Oh, I actually don't have the doppelganger on me. Ugh. I was like, the doppelganger is tried and true. That's how you start taking them out. But, uh, oh boy. Okay. Got him. We're good. We're alive. Somehow. Where is it? Was this just as a bait room? Just to like go like ha ha you fought these enemies. And then I quick save immediately afterwards. Oh well. Now I can flex. I beat that room of enemy. No, oh, I got the key card. Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, so you need to get the, the super missiles and then the thermal uh, visor and then you're right next to getting the spider ball after fighting Thardis. But Thardis requires you to um, utilize both the super missile to break open a wall or break open a little panel and then use the thermal visor with the wave beam to activate, you know, to power it. And uh, that's the combination. That's the hard point you need these items. So they're basically like, oh, can you get through the game without the charge beam like that? That's just kind of annoying. Oh, sorry. Can you get the charge beam after you get the thermal visor as well? It's not even just that you get it late. It's that you basically, like, go back and backtrack all the way to get it. So, okay, I activate this panel, so it's probably something way back. Way back? Maybe. I mean, I've killed every enemy. So that's the part of me of like, where is the secret? Got that, that's cool. First aid there. It's kind of good that I'm going back for some of these. And then the beginning of the level. That's not going to be gained by closing that, I think. Yeah, I knew of the first secret level off the top of my head. I'm like, oh boy, what about the rest of these? suppose there was anything right back here. No, not really. Not that I can see. It's a bit of a phallic shaped room, is it not? And then we were in here. Oh! Sorry, it was the it was the other doorway in, in the... And again, thrown off because apparently I've defeated all the enemies, but then there's way more enemies to defeat. <laughs> Every time. Every time. Oh my gosh, really? You gotta be kidding me, there's still two more of them? Now part of me is like, I shrink the other one, and I shrink the boat. take to shrink them. I'm pretty sure it's like, you just gotta take off some health, and then they can be shrinked, right? He seems to be upset about me doing this all the time. But I shrunk him once just then. Wow. Okay, that's something I gotta look up, I guess. Freeze ray is an option, but uh, oh boy, is that a lot of hits as well. Okay, 
Okay, come on. That's just so annoying. There's so many of these guys. Wow. is pretty pretty consistent though I'll tell you that and uh, that's your regular exit for the level oh, hi there. that's your regular exit for the level then the question becomes where's the secret exit well this looks like a certain other room I've been in already the secret exit. Okay. Let's have a quick look this up. The secret exit. Where is the secret exit? Secret exit. In the room at the very end of the level, walk to the bridge, turn left, and look up at the ceiling. You'll find that. Wow. <laughs> I was like, oh my god, it's right there. There we go. Very nice. Uh, but yeah, no, I don't have to explain why Metro Prime is great. The Retro Chief Set, I don't think, sells the full glory of the game itself. Uh, so here's a secret level called Spin Cycle, which is good fun. I will describe it as good fun. Cool. Basically, this room is a massive, um, how would I describe it? First of all, they give you a lot of goodies. They really want you to have fun here. And then, uh, it's a, it's a giant, like, carousel. The whole floor is spinning around. This world is spinning around me. <laughs> the whole world is spinning without me. And, uh, you just got, like, all these enemies. You might as well just bait them all out. It's not non-Euclidean. I think these are just, uh, like, hexagonal angles. They're not right angles. Uh, they've also got decals naming the little areas, so don't have to think about it. But it's just kind of fun, like, such a massive kind of room, a massive kind of, like, uh, encounter, basically. Because it's just like, <laughs> none of these enemies can really hit you, because they're not really made for that. They don't, they don't aim right. If you ever go to Questicon, I'm very certain it's like a classic Questicon ride that's basically just this. Where it's like, you got a, a little spinning kind of, it's like a seesaw, and you got two people sitting on like the ends, and it spins around via the middle. And it's, uh... Like, all you have to do is just, uh, uh, like, try and throw a ball to your partner on the other side. But because you're both spinning around, you always get that thing where it's like your trajectory just swings out. So the whole point is teaching you about inertia. Uh, so Alpha is where I started. I mean, these guys are going like, to take out the other. Oh. You can very much tell this is more a deathmatch map, and I think a lot of the secret levels after the first game, you know, episodes one, really are just deathmatch maps. Oh, hi there. How you doing? It's good, fun, and wacky, but it's like, uh, it's very much just a deathmatch map. Still, I don't mind populating my items a bit more. There you go. Now the question comes, can I shoot straight? happens up here? Just another enemy. I think you gotta hit the switches on the inside of all the chambers. Nope, not that one at least. Yes, that one. See ya, I'm out of here. See ya. That one has one. Get the heck out of dodge. So not that one, because I've already hit it. But this one. Where was it? I don't know where it was. Can I 
pretty sure I hit the switches on the uh, outsides of all of these places. Maybe, maybe there was a switch on the inside that I missed. The alpha was where I started, and that's got a switch. Oh, these enemies are just chilling right here. Hell, hit that one. Ouch. Gamma I hit? Which one was the one I didn't hit? Oh my gosh. Beta. But I definitely, there, there was a switch on the inside of Beta, yeah, yeah. What am I missing out on here other than constantly spinning around? Lots of songs about spinning around. I keep thinking the Kylie Minogue one is Australian, I guess, but it's just like it's still in my DNA. Oh, it just wasn't rendering. Sorry, it was there, it just wasn't there. Ow. Uh, yeah, you can, you can sort of... Oh my god. Yeah, you, you can sort of rush this level if you want to. Oh. I don't think I can rush it. Where do I stand before they, like, start dropping down from the ceiling? So I'm just going to eternally have issues with those guys. See what I mean? It's like... They're not there, and then they're there. The spin cycle doesn't even protect you. Oh no. Rockets are a man's best friend. That's that's the moral of the story. Just use rockets whenever. Well, I just murdered virtually everyone. A no secrets level as well. Any other last minute goodies or we're good? Just, just saying, because it's like, yep, I've just wasted all my ammo on the last guy, so. Anyway, the last game I want to mention is a game called Spy Hunter on the PS2. Spy Hunter is a um, curious game. It's developed by the same team who did Beetle Racing Adventure. And you can definitely feel it because it's kind of jank. Um, I would describe it as basically, uh, imagine very very loud and bombastic action movie and you don't know the script you're sort of along for the ride and when the game tells you oh you should have jumped here it's like bro what was the cue i don't know learn it speaking of learn let's just get out of here so i think we'll do either one or two more levels see see what i'm feeling gonna rip him a new one gonna rip him a new one tiberius station here we go. Mmm. Inject that drum sound into my veins. You can tell it's Tiberius Station because I got the sign that says Tiberius Station. And the aliens everywhere. Um, but, uh, but yeah. Um, pretty much uh, how to describe the game is you have 14 levels where it's a spy game so therefore you've got to have missions with objectives the mission the objectives are fairly simple of just blow up thing maybe shoot a beacon onto these things scan things and then destroy the ones that are bad that kind of stuff um i love this like it's a mirror there as well 
just throws you up like, ooh. Gosh, Jesus, guys. Coming out of the walls. Oh, they actually are coming out of the walls. Let's look at a drinking fountain, otherwise known as a babla in Australia. Oh my gosh, that rush. The machine gun's very good work at taking them out, though, so. No sweat there. I would love to jump into there though, but. Good dark in here, ain't it? Um, so, yeah, the objectives themselves aren't too complex, but the problem, I guess, when you're trying to learn the game for the first time is that to know when to pull off the objectives often involves finding like little secret paths in the levels. Um, which aren't like, they're not too hidden, it's like, oh, you know, you just have to know you go down a certain pathway. But when you're going through the level for the first time and you've never seen this pathway before, it throws you off and you're like, oh, now I failed the mission because I didn't see this one thing, like, just coming up or I'm running out of time, um, and I've sort of got to, like, awkwardly backtrack and it feels kind of weird. Uh, there's definitely a big problem of that happening in the game. Um, on top of that, you're sort of juggling the controls a bit too much, I find. Um, there you go, gotta do a runner. Hey there, how you doing? Thank you, little tiny computer panel. I appreciate it. Oh, I love, by the way, that there's an enemy, like, jipped between the doors. And they've implemented that as, like, a proper, like, freaking giblet stretches. See what I mean? This little Optibrain got crushed by the door. Very fun effect. Love it. <laughs> I was like, wait for it. Very nice. Let's see that guy up there. Not sure if he's gonna come out, but... We're shooting a fence, bro. We're just shooting a fence. time there. Did we get them all? There we go. There we go. Um, so, one last one because I know I'm going to hit that. Uh, so, yeah. It's a little clunky to activate all your items. As you go throughout the game as well, you'll, gra you'll grab more and more weapons, but uh, to swap between the weapons, you have to keep hitting L1, and ugh, every time. You have to keep hitting L1, and uh, freaking space toilet. You know, for <laughs> space chapter, we haven't had a single, like, low gravity level. Uh, much better. You gotta do it, though. Uh, there we go, open the door. The go up. There we go. Man, these guys are these guys are not kidding. I'm gonna get nitty on your asses. Let's get him with the old fashioned. Hi there. to touch him anyway, so, um, 
but the yeah the um it's uh, it's it's a fair bit of trouble that being said though when it all comes together it's very very nice and explosive of a game you can definitely appreciate it for what it's trying to be but i just think it takes too many goes and the levels themselves are a bit aggravating for what they are and it's not like the game is tons hard like you'll get there after a few attempts and i think it's good to master the level like before you really try and continue on instead of Things are getting a bit wild in there. Ain't it? Uh I think I'm meant to swim to the poop and get a red key card. What do you say? I don't know. my life to some very needless hits though, I'll tell you that. So, there you go. I was like, there's gotta be a ledge to get out of here, right? Yeah. Um, so yeah, I think it probably took me around three hours total, uh, total to, like, master it. Uh, I'm worried what's on the other side of here. Alright, it's just a very, very loud octobrain. Oh, never mind. Ugh. Ow, what? Gripping gameplay right here. He's still there, right? Yeah. yeah. We got him! Woo! I mean, I have a jetpack. What a gripping fight. Oh boy. Safest thing to do on a spaceship as well. Blow it up. This looks like an end of level door, doesn't it? I was wondering where that thing where that guy came up from. Look at this long air vent that's just connecting the whole level together as well. Wow, whole level. So, um, yeah, would I recommend Spy Hunter? It's okay, maybe if you like vehicular combat or spy games, you might have some some fun uh, there. But certainly, I think you could probably find better games to play. Um, it's a little jank. It's a little hard to, to get the most used to, um, and it's sort of over before like it's truly been amazing. But that being said, I do like the presentation. I think the visuals are pretty, you know, good fun for its time period. Um, I got to do this again, don't I? Turn on the lights. What am I looking for here? Oh, we just go down. What am I taking damage from? The fire? Well, we're done with this level. I'm thinking we can do one more. So, Lunar Reactor. Where's the other secret level? Is it on... Uh... It's the next level, so we're good here. Uh, okay, save game. Da -da -da -da. I don't think I actually did a proper save there. Um, but yeah, that was pretty alright, so... Sorry. 
pretty, pretty alright is probably the best way I can describe it. It's not like great, it's not dreadful, it's just kind of alright. Um, but I had a, I had a mate who, uh, um, had a, had a friend or a cousin who played through it and I was just like, it was like, yeah, no, we never could get like that far. And, uh, I'm just, I feel a little bad because it's like, I've played enough of these kinds of games where it's no mystery to me anymore. It's like, oh, I know exactly what they're trying to pull up here and I'm, I'm seeing the stuff and it just takes a bit of perseverance and then eventually you'll grab it. But sometimes the game itself just didn't telegraph things quite the right way. That is one where it's like, if you're a kid playing this, or playing like Spy Hunter on the PS2, um, it's like, bro, I don't blame you on that one. On that one, there's a lot of like, uh, yeah, it's a bit tough and tricky as a game for kids. Okay, where am I going? I've got lots of different doorways. Blue key, no key. Oh, hi there. Nice and easy. I like this mirror completely throws you off again. You put a key card in the toilet. Imagine getting shrunk on the toilet. Ooh. I like how the uh, the sprite itself is mirrored as well. It's a proper reflection. It actually does work as a proper reflection. It's great. Uh, a curious little point there. Maybe that'll open up later in the level. There's a lot of times where it's like it connects like air ducts or things like that, but it's not actually. It's not actually all connected. Hey, where are we going? To the crew quarters. I love the work quarters. Because it's like, it's like places you live, it's getting your limbs torn off, it's just one in four. What a fun word, you know? Ah, yeah, you see what I mean? Once you can open up the other rooms, it's like, oh look, all the, all the vents are open. I'm jumping up against the wall, it looks very odd, but... From the ceiling! From the ceiling! How do you manage to do that? How do you manage to do that? Oh my gosh, every time! Big guys, every time! Every time! So annoying. Um, I'm actually curious as well, can you, can you actually squeeze yourself down here or not quite yet? jump out at me. I remember this area, I don't know why the bunk beds are like iconic to me for some reason. As well as my ability to use it. Yeah. This little creepy spacesuit here, which is like not even physical, it's just kind of there. little cupboards as well where finally finally I found armor how long I went in this whole like level pack no no armor so I wonder what happens oh yeah as well uh, it's the growth ray no ammo for it I think it doesn't come up until the expansion I don't know why it sort of opens up there because it's got its own ammo Danger? Don't mind if I do. Okay, do mind if I do because- of, oh wait, no. There you go. I love how that just all opens up and suddenly now it's like, yep, I'm in... Space land. I mean, I know we're in space, but you know what I mean, it's like... This is big long canyon jump. 
and the game is perfectly fine expecting you to just nail this canyon jump, you know, cash. That's fun, that's fun. Anyway, yellow key card. Enemies all over, watch out because I'm very certain. Earthquake right here. And then I am crushed. Very nice, very fun. Big for you, man. Or small for you. You're you're too big for it. Ouch. Yeah, right, let's not let's not take that much damage, shall we? There we go. We got the wavy, the wavy again. Piece of cake. Gotta pick up the other key card. Where is this guy hiding? I think he might be above me. I can't do anything there. Oh, I can. No, I can't. Huh. Oh, I can. No, I can't. Yes, I can, actually. What the Coming at me, eh? I just hate it when like you lose all your health. There's just something that's like, hey, that wasn't really. I mean, it was kind of my fault, but not really. Okay, into the outdoor. Ah. Oh. That's how you know I was probably just hitting the wall all the time. Gripping gameplay. Did we get the other guy? Massive. There we go. I love this staircase, by the way. It's just like... This is what I mean by, like, the rooms over rooms are sometimes, like, hilariously unnecessary. through, walking through, where are we going? Spinning room, bubbler, light just here, I think this is just an overpass or a, yeah. Well, time to go down some stairs. And meanwhile, I'm shooting out all the lights. I guess mechanically these guys have replaced the, the, um, the pig cops, haven't they? Oh my gosh, there's a couple of them. And then I rocketed myself in the face. Could probably night vision them. No a little hide. I think we're good. I think I can pop off my bed. I think we've got all of them then. Again, lost. Eh. I was like, I lost a lot of my health, and I was like, eh, I don't think there's a really great outcome for this, is there? Alright, turn on the lights. Turn on the switch. Um, turn on the thing. Ow! I've seen this before. Holy shit. 
Yeah. Oh, hi there. Still hi there. This is an ominous corridor, is it not? Oh, it totally is. There we go. Very, very nice. Lovely exploded corridor that didn't even... <laughs> Doesn't even prevent you from backtracking, but sure. So there we go. Uh, I think we're good there, so let's hit the save, hit the auto destruct. Very, very nice. Uh, so I know there's uh, <laughs> three levels left of this expansion. Is it three or four? I think it's three. We've got this one, we've got the secret level, and then there's one afterwards. But I'm tired, and also we got to do uh, episode three <laughs> as well next room, anyways. Or rather, more levels anyway, so. Uh, I think this would be a good place to save it and say... Where I saved. There we go. Uh, with that, I would like to thank you so very, very much for watching. If you did enjoy this, or if you didn't enjoy this, or you, you're pretty indifferent, uh, doesn't matter too much. Uh, you can follow on Twitch, where I uh, just play every week at Monday, 8.30pm Australian Eastern Standard Time. Um... I guess it's the last stream of the month, so I'll be back next week. Um, but that'll be all good. If you miss parts of this, uh, the VOD will be there. But um, if you miss parts of any other stream, or you've seen this later or whatever, I'm on YouTube. I upload the VODs to YouTube, and you can see them all there. As well as also, you can say nice comments about me, or not. You can say mean things, but I'm, I'm not going to like the mean things as much. And if, uh, if you want to see random ramblings or things I say over time, uh, I'm on the Fetty. You can follow me, uh, just m.bandao.com. You'll find me, don't worry. Links in the descriptions and places around, you'll see it. Uh, anyways, with that, stay safe, eat your greens, don't stay up too late, and uh, don't let the aliens steal your babes. That's, that's where we're going at for this, so... Uh, peace, have a good one, sleep tight fellas.